Hey, Spiralers. Welcome back to the studio. Today, Gina and I are here with an incredibly exciting guest. I know we say that every single time, (laughs) but this is different. We have been devouring her content for the last month or more. Yeah, it's been... I want to say like maybe six months for me. Six months. Okay. Favoriting, sharing, commenting. And this woman, Miss Ariel New, is a coach, a podcast host, a YouTube content creator. You've seen her on socials at IG, TikTok, and she's also a master of conversations. This woman has been able to break down how to be dynamic in conversations, how to up the sharpness, how to tone down with the softness. Mm -hmm. And we are so excited to pick her brain today. So Ariel, welcome to the studio. Welcome. Thank you so much. That was such an incredible introduction. (laughs) I'm shy now. It was (laughs) honestly just the truth. All facts. Yeah, all facts. (laughs) We're just talking about who you are. (laughs) Thank you, Yeah, we've... I was so excited when you sent me her content too because yeah. it just immediately caught my attention, all of everything that you're sharing. And so thank you so much for coming. We were yeah. extra excited that you're a local. Mm-hmm. She's our first in-studio guest, which mm-hmm. is so special. And yeah, I guess just to jump right into it because we have so much to talk about, we would so love much. for you to share how you got into this work. I'm sure your personal journey led you into this path. So take us on a journey. Yeah, how far do you want this journey to go? <laughs> so much to say. Okay, I'll give you guys like a cliff notes first. I'll try my best. I'll try my best. But um, thank you guys so much for the introduction. As with social dynamics, conversational skills, socializing has always been a strength of mine. Mm. So I've always been really good at socializing. I've always, when I, you know, I, I lived in Vancouver most of my life, but then I uh, moved to Toronto. And when I was in Vancouver, I was always very social in my friends group. When I went to Toronto, I started to go, I, I went balls to the walls the first two years I was there. So I went to a lot of networking events, socializing mm. events, and the nightlife scene. I was really in the nightlife scene. And so it was always a strength of mine. And when I was in Toronto, I also felt the Toronto energy, like that hustler energy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Everyone has a side gig outside of their full time. So mm-hmm. I've always wanted to do something more. So at that point, I started New Views end of 2018. But that was I started it uh, doing lifestyle and food blogging mm-hmm. in Toronto. So it wasn't anything I was doing now. But I've always had a fascination for spirituality and existence and deeper human connections. Mm-hmm. So in the beginning, I just had these random passions and interests all over the place. And I wanted to just experiment. So as I was doing lifestyle and food blogging, I would sometimes drop in like something spiritual, mm. something about self-development. And my followers would drop, people would get confused, <laughs> and I would be confused too. And I'd be like, what am I doing? But then the more I started to really look at my own lifestyle and why I'm good at socializing, but also all the experiences I went through in my own life, trials and tribulations, the mm. more I realized that it's all connected somehow. Mm-hmm. And it was also a lot of faith and trust to really start to put out content I actually want to put out. Yes. So yeah. I just kept exploring with self-development here and there on Instagram. But eventually I went on TikTok. I started to experiment on TikTok and I created some original content about self-development, about communication, and and then it popped off. And then it's been a journey since. Like, there's so much that happened since then as well. But mm-hmm. I was finally able to come more into a niche that I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot, I know we were talking beforehand, on how, on my social journey too. Even though I was always good at it, there's a lot more to that as well. So I'm happy to Oh, elaborate. yeah. It's a roller coaster, right? And um I can tell that from your current content, and if anyone were to go to your page now, it's very clear what your niche has sort of become. Mm -hmm. And it's this understanding that how conversations develop and change over time have everything to do with how aware you are of your energy. Mm -hmm. And that has a very spiritual component. Mm -hmm. And so you said a lot of your work is actually derived from your deep spiritual path. And so I'm kind of, I kind of want to go there a little bit before we get into, yeah, before we get into the conversation dynamics, which I'm sure people are like, wait, like, how do I sharpen? How do I soften? But let's talk about the spiritual origins of- Oh my gosh, so much. Thank you for asking me that. I'm so excited. (laughs) Um, Honestly, psychedelics, man. (laughs) I mean, I feel you. Yeah. uh, Psychedelics. Okay. Before psychedelics came into my life, it was more. I was just always fascinated with life and death. Mm. I remember when I was 
a kid, I was in Vancouver. I went to. Do you guys know Willingdon Church in Burnaby? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've been there. Yeah. Okay, I I used to go to、uh, the youth groups, and I would sometimes go to Bible studies, and I remember vividly. Being in a Bible study group and the pastor would be there, and I would be like, I, I, I love, I believe that there was a higher power, but I didn't get a lot of the Bible ref- references, so、yeah. I would be、mm. grilling him. I'll be like, so why did Jesus do this? Like,、yes. if this happened, why is、that、this like、me. this? That was me. Yeah, <laughs> and then all his answers were always, I was like, not satisfied,、yeah. and I've always had these like, what. What is beyond this, and why are we here? And like human emotions, human intentions. Like I've always noticed the subtleties of these things, and I think when I was younger, I couldn't connect that I had these fascinations, and it was also tied to my social strengths.、Mm. But here was already an inkling because it's the reason why I was always good at socializing is because I was always sensitive to social energies. I've always been really sensitive to energies,、yeah. so. To your note earlier, we were talking about earlier.、Um, I, even though I was always good at it, and there's obviously moments when I'm socializing, I'm super confident. There's so many times I actually would just be presenting confident, but I would、mm. be feeling so bad on the inside, so nervous, feeling、mm. like I'm not as good as other people. Or on the flip side, feeling like I am the shit. So like, why aren't they? Giving me what I want them to give me back, <laughs>、right. you know, and then and sometimes I'm actually very confident. So all these things just、uh, instilled a lot of questions and curiosities、mm. within me. And then when I went to Toronto, as I was developing new views, I was also going through a lot in my personal life, both highs and lows.、Mm-hmm. And it was at that point I started to experiment with psychedelics for、uh, self development purposes. When I was in Vancouver, I, you know. Should I say this? <laughs> recreational, yeah, recreational, JF, yeah, yeah, JFF, you just know, for fun. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we all went through our twenties, so you know. Yeah, so I've dabbled in a many different things. So even psychedelics, I used to do it recreationally with friends. And you know what? I'm not no shame in that because no. psych- psychedelics, like mushrooms, if you have balance within yourself, it's such a great time. It's yeah,、amazing. and it's yeah. way better than anything else out there. Those are things you should avoid. Psychedelics、mm-hmm. is good. Just like take it with you know, be mo- moderated. So. When I was in Vancouver, I did it for fun, and I got great experiences there. But it was also in those moments I felt this higher power come over me.、Mm. Yeah, I felt this higher power come over me, and it was trying to tell me really crazy things about existence, about connections, and my future, like、mm. my purpose. But then I pushed it away because I was in a state where I just was not ready to receive all of this. So then, when I went to Toronto, I started to use it and. I'm gonna pause here, but there's a lot more I'm gonna say to that too. But <laughs> that's how I started to get a lot of insights that helped me connect the dots with everything. Yeah,、mm. and I think what I can intuit is that when you go on a psychedelic journey, this paradigm of superiority and inferiority completely dissolves.、Mm-hmm. And something I was really attracted to in your content was that. When people talk sharply and、mm-hmm. want to put on this front and expose themselves as someone who maybe is powerful,、mm-hmm. it can come from a false place. Like、yes. I feel deeply insecure, and therefore I need to come across sharply、yes. and powerfully and、yes. confidently. Likewise, on the other side, you talk a lot about the people pleasing and the shutting down、mm-hmm. and fawning,、mm-hmm. and that is the inferiority symptom of the softening,、yes. right? And so all of this is a symptom of. This false ego, the,、yeah. the idea、mm-hmm. that you can be superior or that you are inferior,、yeah. and so I feel that what you bring to conversations is this beautiful balance because there is no such thing as being superior or inferior.、Mm-hmm. So then you can play with yeah. softness yeah. and sharpness. And so I would love for you to talk about how you realize that maybe because、mm-hmm. I don't think that people understand that how they present in conversations or social dynamics is a reflection of how inferior. Or superior that they might feel. Yeah,、mm-hmm. yeah, that's a great that's a great way that you put it. That that helped me come into my train of thought. But、um, I think, honestly, going back to my spiritual journey after I had these spiritual awakenings and a lot of the very profound ones were in Toronto.、Mm-hmm. I actually went through a phase where everything kind of just I had to drop everything within、mm. myself and I isolated myself. I just I had to just heal and. Discard everything, and in the beginning, the more I committed to my self love journey, which is basically the spiritual journey. Yes. yes, I went through a phase where I just became very stoic, very zen, and then、mm. I wasn't sure if I'm supposed to be this or that. I I kind of 
saw emotions and expressions as maybe, you know, being cheeky or having an attitude is not good for you. Like, because, Mm. you know, I'm trying to be, I think what happened was I was shown all these messages of what I used to do within friends or just social circles where I would be subtly manipulating people. Mm -hmm. That was one of the things I used to do in socializing places. I've always been good at making people feel inclusive. That's why I did feel good in these right. moments but if I didn't get what I want or if I was like having some emotional tension with people I would use subtle manipulative ways to yes to to present myself and because I'm good at it I always got by but then I would feel bad on the inside mm. so when I started to go through my spiritual journey I let so much of that go mm. and then I got to a place where I was like boring honestly I went I, there was a time where I was already woke and shit but then I was already doing content but then I was just like why am I so dry and like so scared of everything Thing. Like I can't, I'm not myself anymore. And yeah. even though I'm happy that I'm not, you know, I'm balanced now within, but I'm just not fun anymore. And that's not the purpose of life. And I mm-hmm. know that good and bad is just subjective. So yeah, hundred. I started digging into that more. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it sounds like to me, and I think we've both gone through this period in our journey too, where yeah. you just kind of cap expression for a while. Yeah. And I love that you mentioned stoic because I became very obsessed with stoicism. Mm-hmm. Like I was all about Seneca and like Marcus Aurelius. And I'm yeah. just like, wow, nothing matters. Yeah. Okay. Like I'm not going to react to anything. Yeah. And I almost thought that being non-reactive I almost found superiority through that. I was like, I'm completely emotionless and I'm not gonna let that bother me and I'm not gonna get manipulative or like superior about that. I'm just gonna be neutral. Yeah. And And I really- it's boring, right? It's so boring. (laughs) There was actually, you maybe saw these on TikTok. There was a lot of jokey TikToks about how once you heal, you just become boring. And now you just wanna like be chaotic to have fun. Yeah, yeah, Um, I've seen those. Yeah, but now you can do it not to just like, bring chaos into your life but just to actually be playful and uh, play with these different expressions and so yeah so how did you go from stoicism bored unexpressed to realizing you can play with Mm -hmm. social dynamics Mm -hmm. in a way that doesn't implode your ego yeah I feel like you guys probably went through a uh, similar experience so I would be curious to hear but it was the ongoing journey of my spiritual journey Sometimes it would just be through meditation. I would realize certain things. Sometimes it would be through psychedelics again. But then I started to just realize that it almost felt like this was, I see life. Uh, I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. Let's go Let's there. do it. Let's go. Ready. I, it's called spiraling I really higher. believe that we are in a simulation. Like mm. this is some sort of simulation, but the simulation goes way deeper and way more nuanced. And we are the of creators of the simulation yeah. too. Like there's nothing outside of us anyways. So I see this is, you can also see all of this as a game. Yeah, I, I do. really feel like we are leveling up and there's some, there's like underlying things that Everything is connected and it is a game. Like, yeah. you can really feel into it. You really can because yeah. when you feel into what you talked about earlier, everything is connected. If you think of a game, like, every single piece and part of the coding has an intention for another part of the yes. coding. Yeah. Yes. Like, there, there's no, like, separate parts of, like, all the code is one code. Yes. And I feel like that's the code of life. Like, yeah. there is no such thing as separation. Yes. And something you talk about in a lot of your guides or content is how it's impossible for you not for you not to be affected by someone or something. Like we are constantly mirroring the energy Mm -hmm. because we're all one Mm -hmm. ball of energy Mm -hmm. experiencing these little localized Mm -hmm. points of energy. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, we've had a conversation before with, um, we had Nick on our podcast where we talked about the entire universe is a game. Like also, by the way, this is random, but you guys have to jot this down if you don't know this yet. You guys should search up Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard, the actor. Oh, what? Oh, oh, okay. Oh. I thought you were talking about a mathematician. No, but no. Terrence <laughs> Howard, the actor. Have you seen him on? Uh, no, in I shows? recognize the name. Okay. No, I know who he is. But oh I my gosh, seen you guys shows. are gonna go down a rabbit hole. I tell, I'm gonna. Okay, he was just on the Write Joe. But yeah, he was just on the <laughs> Joe Rogan podcast. It was three hours. I'm not fully done yet, but I, I'm watching the whole thing. He is woke as well. He's fun. there. And He's there. Terrence Howard. He recently went to Stanford and he did a speech there. And watch that one first. It's shorter, 45 mm-hmm. minutes. You guys are gonna resonate with it because. I just got excited because you guys are kind of going there too. He is someone looking at all of this too, like how it's, we're all sort of, we're one consciousness, but he's really, he has a bunch of patents and he knows he's able to talk about the science science behind it. So he's trying to connect all the dots. And I think he also has some thoughts on how this is all coordinated or some sort of simulation is happening but it is one consciousness so yeah dig into that yeah yeah i mean i feel like the the quantum physics already shows this yeah for right? sure there's so much in, on like it's already 
all out there. It's out there. I feel like it's just people are all in their individual roles doing that work and they are not connecting it to all the other things that are doing the same thing or talking about the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Going back to what were you just saying? (laughs) Like, what were we just saying? Well, we were talking about the whole like inferiority, superiority paradigm and how that can show up in the sharpness and the softness. Yeah. Um, And how you also became very stoic and you were like, you know what? I don't want to have a reaction. I just want to be peaceful. I think anyone on their healing journey will go through that. But Mm -hmm. someone who is in like what I feel the integrative phase of their healing journey, you're playful as fuck. Yeah. Like you are a child. Like this, this simulation has gone from obstacle course to playground. Yes. Mm -hmm. You are, you are loving it. Like even the challenges, you're like stoked. Like this is like the next level version of me. And I see it as fun because like Gina and I always say, it's like there's, you remove the stakes. Mm-hmm. And so it's actually fine even if you don't level up. Like mm-hmm. the point isn't to level up and become a better person. It's to just experience yourself trying to level up. Yeah, yeah we've talked about mastering emotions. And I right. think when you go through the spiritual journey, everyone tries to master yeah. that. Yeah. And I don't really think it's something to like master and tame to the point where you don't feel anything. Mm-hmm. And we talk about this a lot with our clients that it's not about not feeling certain emotions but Definitely. changing the relationship to Definitely. them yeah and mm-hmm. so yeah like i'm somebody that I, I love emotions i don't think i'm ever someone that doesn't want to the feel. cancer says yeah same and, yeah Pisces. like totally yeah. <laughs> so i love the idea of playfulness and i'm i have a nine-year-old daughter and it's so interesting to observe her because kids are just you have a nine-year-old daughter i do i do she's perfect i'm turning 40 what? <laughs> I feel like I always oh need to tell gosh. people that because I think they're like teen mom. And I'm like, no. I'm like, oh my gosh. Mom. I thought you guys are, are you guys similar? No, me? she's nine years younger than me. So she's 31. One. Oh, so okay. We're pretty 40. close. I thought you guys were like mid 20s or something. So I'll take it. I'll I take mean, the you w. are basically. I'm I'm in my 30s. Yeah. I, the Saturn wow. return says differently. In my mind, I always think you're like 20 something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, watching children, they're just so like gutturally themselves, mm-hmm. right? When they're hungry, they're hungry. When they're mad, they're mad. When they're tired, they're going to say it. When they don't want to do something, they speak it. So it's been really interesting to observe the way that she shows up yeah. in her life and the way she expresses mm-hmm. herself because I'm someone who naturally has... Like, I'm a crap, right? So I <laughs> tend to... I'm very emotional. What's your cancer placements? Where? So they're all in the 10th house. Um, okay. and Sun, so Sun, Venus. Venus, Midheaven. Mer- mm-hmm. And Mercury. Is Mercury cancer too? I think so. All Whoa, right. you're very cancer. Very I'm cancer. Sun, Mercury, and... Midheaven. Venus. Venus. And Venus. Venus, okay. Yeah, okay. so quite a lot. Yeah. Um, and just growing up in my household... There was no communication of Mm. emotions or anything like that, but I had so many to share. And so I think growing up, I had so much to say and we moved every two years. And so I was always in this very shy kind of, I don't know, I I think a lot of people think I'm really confident because in my professional life, I can come off that way. So Mm -hmm. I really resonated with what you said where... I can I know how to turn that on. Yeah. But inside, yeah. I'm like shaking in my boots. Yeah. Or feeling really you know, uncomfortable. Yeah. This actually begs a question that I'm curious for you to answer, Ariel, but I wonder if you were a really emotional child, if that would naturally contribute to your feelings of inferiority. Because we are mm. gr- we are raised in a culture, an overculture that says those are weak. Yeah. Because I was not an emotional child, no. as you know. I was just very wild and brave and rambunctious. Right. Uh, I didn't cry unless I was physically hurting I see and so I didn't grow up with this feeling that like oh something's wrong with me because I feel a certain way I always felt very justified in my pain because they were physical yeah I didn't know how to deal with emotional pain until I was much older. And so I wonder, what do you think about that? Do you think if you had a lot of emotional turmoil that you would learn to perceive yourself as inferior? And if you didn't, maybe maybe the overculture is contributing to how superior you feel. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like it could get very nuanced. I'm curious if you guys see it, your journey growing up. It seems like you're saying that you weren't that emotional or you just didn't approach – your emotional nature as much until you were older for me though I think it was kind of both like Mm. I grew up I was the only child for a long time and I was always like the oldest in my generation my family and my mother she's amazing but you know we also had to work through a lot of things growing up but she kind of both 
really put me on a pedestal but sometimes like she just couldn't deal with emotions she didn't know how to speak of emotions mm-hmm. so I and our family went through a lot of things so I also had a lot of pain so for me I had both sides I had a side mm. of me where I was like always the best super confident always praised by my family and that created superiority in me mm. but I also had a side where there was just a lot of pain turmoil I didn't know how to talk about it I had to like put it in so that's why it creates the weird discrepancies I think you were mentioning Gina where it's like sometimes I would present very confident but I'm actually very inferior inside so if you guys see a lot of times when I talk about superiority inferiority I think when I first presented this concept I was more this and that with it Mm. the more you look at it the more you realize they're they're the same yeah 100% you could be if you're feeling superior it's because you are feeling inferior yes Yes. because or else why would you need to be superior if you're truly confident and the thing is when you're truly confident it's actually a balance of both in my eyes because And what is actually happening, it's not a static thing. Nothing is static. You're actually just conscious and you know how to flow between. And it's not really superior and inferior. It's just like me and you. Like confident Mm. and serving serving myself and serving others. So Mm. you're just like going like this and you're not going so far that you get to the uh, superior uh, intensity or the uh, inferior intensity, the yeah. imbalances. Mm, yeah. But it's all on the same spectrum. We're all playing this in the same way. So, and that's why when you're superior, you're also inferior too. It's all happening at the same time. It's more so imbalance versus balance, I would say. Mm. Mm. And it makes sense too that you're saying that you experienced both when you're growing up because your entire intention is to help people experience more of that balance. Yeah. And maybe that that balance comes more intuitively to you, but. It's so fascinating that the true confidence, and I resonate with that, it feels true in my heart, that it would actually be a balance of the sharp and the soft or like that sense of superiority, inferiority. But what I find is that we keep trying to do these Mm overcorrections. And I know that that's true for Gina and me because I was able to pick up on my sharpness. I'm like double fire. So I thought really negatively about yeah, that and yeah. thought oh, I need to be like more soft. Like, yeah. you know, it's so funny in our joint coaching containers, everyone's like, oh, Gina's like so motherly. <laughs> and like, she makes me feel so safe. And I'm like, what am I? Like, like <laughs> I'm like, role. I'm the yeah. father. I'm yeah. like the pun- say that Which all the time. Which is very necessary too. <laughs> True. But I felt like I had really demonized the sharpness. Yeah, I get and it. It felt like I was trying to walk through the world a bit, especially my relationship. I'm like, I'm just going to like be soft. Like I'm and I really felt like I just wasn't myself anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think in your case, too, you were like, okay, I need to like I need to be like sharper. Like, here we go. Well, that's the thing. I think when you are on such opposing like neither of that, I I would really just admire that about you where you would just say, I don't like that. Yeah. And I'd be like, you can say that. I'm like, oh, I kind of like it. Like, when, if somebody gave me a bad haircut, I always right. talk about this. I'd be like, I love it. And inside, I'm like, I need to go somewhere else now. Right. Um, where That's you a people-pleasing thing. Totally. Because <laughs> I'm like, well, they're going to feel so bad about it. And they really tried. Just be a and bitch. It's my hair. Like, I love you, but can you please correct it? <laughs> like, what is happening here? <laughs> or you would say, like, when you get your nails done, it's actually hilarious. We get our nails done all the time. They're like, do you like your shape? I'm like, love them. She's like, can you fix that one? Yeah. That one's I'm more like right. that, too. I'm just like, it's not. Can you just, yeah. like, do this, please? <laughs> Sometimes like right I ask here? for the nail file myself. I'm like, just, just give yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, same, same. Sometimes they're doing it and I'm seeing it right there and they look away. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. I just sit. I don't even look. I'm like, love it. Yeah. Looks great. You, you don't even confirm. I don't. You don't I'm you're like, like, it's, it's fine. It's yeah. fine. It's good enough. And so I've always admired that in people who mm, could yeah. speak that truth. I think for me that, it doesn't bother me enough to, I guess, say something, mm-hmm. but I have always admired that in you. So I guess I wanted to p- start practicing that. So my daughter yeah. actually got a haircut mm. that was atrocious it was so bad it was like she literally forgot one side of it and so I was like okay I'm gonna practice yeah. saying yeah that and even then I was like hi um <laughs> so I was sorry. just in there yesterday so yeah. sorry to bother you um I, there's nothing against the girl who did it and I did that but it was still a stretch for me to yeah. even go back mm-hmm. and they did fix it um but I do find contextually I can I almost embody these different archetypes Yeah. because I think professionally, like I've had a team, I used to be in real estate. I've always been in leadership roles. So Mm -hmm. firing somebody, having, you know, those uncomfortable conversations if they're not, you know, performing or whatever, those have actually always come easy for me. Mm -hmm. But I think it's because there's always been a soft approach so Mm -hmm. that I think people don't feel like attacked when I'm I'm expressing that. But I've also Mm -hmm. been able to practice in those contexts being more, I guess, sharp but I find in relationships, there is this 
deep discomfort of I never want the person that I love so much to ever feel anything other mm-hmm. than love from me. And so then I tend to kind of quiet maybe certain things. Not so much anymore. We've worked through a lot. I imagine I just start telling you everything that I've seen. Yeah. Been <laughs> <laughs> no, but we have been able to, I think, yeah. merge a lot of our yeah. natural qualities. But I just find that really interesting because as I was reviewing a lot of your content and reviewing that guide, I guess my question is at what point would it ever become like not authentic to who you really are because Mm -hmm. when I started to practice Mm -hmm. sharpness I was like but is that me Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and if I do practice that like do I even want to do that so how do you balance who you truly are with maybe embodying some of these different archetypes archetypes that are not naturally you that's a great question yeah and I get asked this all the time in my content and my answer is always before you even refine or change yourself the number one thing you have to do is get to know yourself and accept your natural expressions Mm. not even just like like, literally get to know it because I think a lot of people they they just get triggered through social interactions and they start to think I need to become someone different or like they start to think (laughs) that they're just in the wrong and they have to do all these things where that's Mm. not going to take even if there's some truth in there because there probably is there's a reason why those situations came up but if you don't know yourself you don't know how you express and you don't accept it how do you even change like there's what are you you're just chaotic so right it's I and to your point all of our natural expressions just like what you guys were saying about you two I see it beautifully like I love your fire I love your softness and you guys are not as black and white as you think we're all Mm, always just seeing ourselves in such a straight way but true so when you first get to know your expressions you got to just accept it for how it is right now Mm -hmm. at the same time though a lot of the nuances we talk about the reasons why we feel you know we put out so we put ourselves out there and then we express our natural way and we get a certain feedback and we're just like oh that wasn't great or Mm -hmm. I want to shift there is some truth in there too but it's not about you needing to change your expressions I see it as you need to hone it Mm. your natural fire for example just like me Aries moon Mm -hmm. I sometimes in social settings before I honed myself, I would just feel the fire and I would just blah. Yeah. And then my or like I'm very blah. Yeah. And then <laughs> anything I want to like do or say, my initial thing is just I need to get it out. Like I just need to say me it. Yesterday. <laughs> that, was me. that was me yesterday. You were like, I didn't know we were gonna have this conversation, but this is cool. Like this is Well, she'll often start conversations with I really have to talk to you about something. Right. And then she'll just like launch into exactly. it where I'm a kind <sighs> exactly. of Exactly again like not accepting it where I think my delivery of the same topic would be hey there's something I want to talk about we can find the right time like but I again I love Mm. that about you but I think it's helpful to understand the nuances of both sides Mm -hmm. so that we can also not villainize that in the other person because I think I had to learn a lot about that Mm -hmm. definitely from you about oh okay that's not you being thinking there's something wrong with me that Mm. is just your natural way of expressing I love how how you guys do your real talks. It seems like you guys are really able to talk about many things and be transparent with each other. Yeah, everything. We've had some That's really great deep to see conversations. Yeah, we have tough conversations too. Yeah. Not where we're like in deep conflict, but it's an issue that for I think a lot of people would be a conflict. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the way that we navigate uh, with balanced expression. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is very helpful because what I will say with Gina is that I'm that Aries moon, I temper mm-hmm. with her. Maybe it's because of my awareness mm-hmm. of mm. how you often present and approach situations. And I think that's what you're teaching people mm-hmm. is yes. like, don't be a different person, but be aware of how you're showing up yeah. and be open to how that's going to be mm-hmm. received. Mm-hmm. Because the other thing I want to talk okay, so you asked about how do we make sure that our authentic expression is not being squashed, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. By trying to be intentional. But I guess my question is, let's say, okay, I'm authentically accepting who I am. I'm honing my expression. I'm showing up intentionally in these situations. But ultimately, this is an improv with someone socializing, right? I'm actually in improv classes right now. Oh, amazing. So I love it. There's so much overlap. I'm like, yeah. wow, this is like what just conversations are like. Yeah. But the wild card is that you don't know how the person's going to receive or respond to you. Mm-hmm. Yes. And what I've learned in improv is that the scene dies, so to speak, if there is no receiving. So if the other person is not able to receive your anger or receive your curiosity or your love. And so I think what happens in these social dynamics is we feel like really bad about ourselves if mm-hmm. that person's not receiving. Mm-hmm. But what I'm learning is that's 
that's that's a two-party thing. Like mm-hmm. you can't control if someone receives. And so in that case, what would you suggest to someone? Because I'm assuming whoever's listening to you really wants to improve their socialization. Mm-hmm. Like how do I show up in the workplace more balanced? How do I show up in my relationship more balanced? But there's someone else there mm-hmm. that you have to be receiving and giving from. So I'm wondering, what would you suggest to that person? Because you're not coaching their partner or their boss, yeah. Yeah. right? You're only coaching them. Absolutely. And that's probably the second biggest question I get all the time. Um, in the end, yeah, if you know yourself, you know your expressions and you hone it and you are intentional, then that is the best you can do, bitch. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're trying your best <laughs> and you go in there and you just do what you can. And obviously, if it's a party that you know, you're going to also, just like what you guys do to each other, you're going to take some time to consider their personality and how you can better deliver mm-hmm. and not squashing your sense of expression too, but you find more of that balance. If it's a stranger, that's literally the best you can do. You are going to be intentional. You're going to know what you want to say you're going to choose how you want to deliver it and however you do it the second part that I always talk about is I give you guys these tools and techniques and a lot of times they work but life is not always going to be like it's all a spiral it's not a straight line so Mm -hmm. so sometimes you're going to uh, many times you're going to get unrespected, uh, unexpected responses. Sometimes it's just like, okay, you got to just shut it down. Sometimes it's more so unexpected, but you can play in the moment to get mm-hmm. it to a better place. Right. But regardless, the way you do it is nonchalance. This mm. alert nonchalance. And this is something that I still, Ooh. Aries movement, I still actively practice every no, day. <laughs> I literally watched the nonchalance video yesterday because I was like, how do I be? nonchalant yeah. like I I'm such an intense person like yeah. I'm either really happy or like yeah. really mad and yeah. so yeah can you please talk more about yeah. alert nonchalance yeah. so that us of intense course. people can and I navigate. love how you frame that because it's really not when I ask this to my audience too I survey them all the time um seeing how they resonate with some of the keywords I use yes. and when I first said what do you guys think nonchalance is a lot of people are like, you just don't care. You just don't care yeah. about anything. Yeah. You don't care yeah. and you're just like, whatever about it and blah, blah, Or you you pretend it's not there. I'm like, that is no. <laughs> That's not what it is. The way that I see lo- nonchalance mm. and the reason why it's alert nonchalance is this super ability to, and we can all do it, to care and not care at the same time. I am hyper conscious and aware of the entire situation. I can even still be very expressive and emotional, but because I'm conscious, I'm alert, I'm smart about how I express. So Mm. I'm aware and conscious of everything. So however you're responding to me, I'm even making observations of you. So if I'm going into this uh, interaction with a stranger, I did my whole intention breathing balance and I deliver it. Now I'm looking at them. I might even have emotional sentiments, but my base, I'm breathing and I'm just like, no matter what, it's fine. Like... I could still have observations. I can cho- still choose mm. to deliver or even express emotions, but my base on the inside, I'm okay no matter what. Mm. And also, a lot of it's in the moment. Like maybe I choose because I do have Aries Moon, so I'm going to go in d- more direct and right. say certain things. If they start to respond a certain way, I can shift in that moment and I can choose to appease, but I'm not doing it for people pleasing. It's just whatever I can do to make this energy and this interaction the most feel good inside me. So Mm. that's how I see alert nonchalance. You're just Mm. very present, alert, conscious, very aware. You care, but everything is always okay. Like you're regulated on the inside. It's it's mm. essentially neutrality is well, what it feels like. Well, it's actually what we teach. We it just is. don't call it nonchalance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because I, I think that. it is being very conscious and aware, but there is this base of my joy and my feelings and my view of myself is not contingent on this yes, response. Yes, exactly. Um, mm-hmm. So I love that you said like, I'll be okay no matter what, because mm-hmm. that's pretty much the basis of our coaching is yeah. that you know, life is really different when you love yourself um, because it isn't hinging on that. We we can find that within. And that's something that I've definitely learned on my journey to yeah, be okay with the person's response and knowing that that is theirs and they get to have that, but that doesn't have to mean anything about about me. Whereas before, I think for most people pleasers or more maybe soft people, you are kind of adjusting almost Mm -hmm. based on that person's response and it is this low-key manipulation of okay let me adjust so that you like me better or so that you see me in the way that I want you to see me and so I really resonated with that and it can get really nuanced because if you really think about it I think to answer your questions from like 10 minutes ago (laughs) (laughs) you asked about how um 
how did I go from stoic to being more expressional again? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The more like one thing was I just wanted to play in life, and the more I meditate and get more spiritual downloads, I'm like, this is just play. Like we're this here is to play. play. Yeah. So then I was like, wait, I can't be cheeky and have attitude. And then I started to see that it's not black and white. It's not. There's no. Good and bad is not. There is a way to live in a higher conscious place, but you have all the emotions, and you you still have competition or tension with people. But it's more so everyone at their base has the same understanding. Like yeah. all this talks that we're talking about, it's now in science too, and everyone just knows this is the way reality works. So if you're going to be manipulative or think that you're always better or try to do things a certain way, that you know you're just an idiot because you know the laws of how this all works. So with the emotion thing, because I found out that's the case, I started to just let myself be emotional and even get upset and do certain things. But it's really in the moment. I would catch myself at this moment now. If we're interacting, is it getting to a place where it's going to be imbalanced? Am I、mm. starting to go into true inferiority or true superiority? So it get it can get very nuanced because the thing is like people pleasing, ple-、uh, appeasing to people. It's not. Bad. It's only bad when we start to feel really bad about ourselves, and we start to get very fake with it.、Yeah. But a lot of times, when we're with people, we're gauging how they are like, and、mm-hmm. we might, in the moment, do certain shifts to make them feel better and to also serve us, and that's fine. Like it's、mm-hmm. not,、uh, it's not a bad thing. It's only when we're letting fears or worries be the driver of our decisions, and、yeah. we're starting to become very fake with it all.、Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I have to say something really funny, but every time you say nuanced, it feels like a pun. Really, because, because your last name is new, so I'm、oh, like、yeah. nuanced. <laughs> and that has been such a word for me. I think like I discovered it more maybe a year and a half ago, and then I see it all the time because it really is. Everything gets so, so it nuanced.、Yeah. It really is all the time too. All the time. We、yeah. said it on the way here, but.、Yeah. Um, I love how you said everything's connected, and if you really know how the laws of this universe works, then when you treat someone badly or like if you feel negatively towards someone, you're you're really just fucking yourself.、Mm-hmm. I have been really leaning on the concept of karma, which I don't think that we understand fully. But karma for me is an explanation that like whether you see the connections or not, and how that impacts you, it does.、Mm-hmm. Like you don't have to n- experience the direct impact of something you do, but it but it does come back around because you're all connected. So sometimes I think about. Especially like in my close relationships, wanting to make someone feel a certain way, but then I remember that karma takes care of that for me. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Like I don't have to actually do that. Like we've had that conversation before,、mm-hmm. where it's like I want, I want them to know how I feel, or like I、yeah. want. But it's like, but they do. They, they experience the impact of、yeah. their energy. Yeah, that's not something that we have to ensure someone experiences. Yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking about that when you were yeah connecting all those pieces. I don't know if you guys read the energy tuning part of my guide. Yes. yes. Yeah. So that is that can get very nuanced because <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Sam, I I've seen some of your content. I know that you got really deep into your spiritual journey too. Like I I remember seeing some of your TikToks, and I'm I can tell. I mean, you know, no you discrimination. All everyone is you know all all, all love, but. You can see some people in the spiritual community. They're it's more so. I think they're in their beginning stages.、Mm. They're talking about a lot of things where it's just like, of, yeah, of course it is like that, you know. Right. And you, I think some of the content I saw, I know that you get deep. So I'm I I'm curious because that energy tuning part I wrote in the guide, a lot of it was through the downloads I would get in my meditations、mm-hmm. and psychedelic experiences, but also. It's funny because a lot of these downloads, after I would get them initially, and it would just be original to me. I would think it was like a conversation between me and God, and I would have never seen it outside before. Then slowly,、mm. I would start to see it. That's how you see that everything's connected. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But so the energy tuning piece.、Um, This actually plays a lot into my content too, and it gets so nuanced because <laughs> <laughs> because the deeper you get, the more you realize that. We literally create everything from our thoughts and emotions. No,、yes. lit- literally. Yes. yes, that's all I teach. Yes. yes, yes. And if you really look at it, it's also how you think about others. The how you think about others, you are creating it. You are、yes. creating that energy. Yes. yes, you make it real. Yes, and how you think they think you about you. Is also true. Like you're influencing that. Yes. Are you guys、uh, fans of Friends? Like the show? Yeah. I'm obsessed like with Friends. Okay. Like I watch it religiously. Okay. It's just always on. Yes. Do you remember that episode where、um, uh, Phoebe and Rachel found out about 
Chandler and Monica and yes. and then Joey was also in there somehow. And you then, know that I know, yes. but they don't know that we <laughs> yeah, know yeah, that yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so there's this episode where they kept going back and forth and they're trying to like play games so that uh, Chandler and Monica would reveal themselves. Right. And then they would always be like, so they know that we know that they know, but they don't know that we know they know we know they yes. know. <laughs> Yes, I love that episode. Yeah. And that just got me thinking about that because it's basically like that. How yeah, we think. Right. Like if I'm thinking you guys are thinking something about me, the more I think that, the more you're, I'm creating it. Yeah. Yes. Now yeah. we are feeling and sensing yeah. what you're thinking that yeah. we're thinking about you and yeah. now we're feeling. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So that's why that <gasps> energy tuning is actually, it's, I make it, it's, some people think it's woo-woo. Some people see it very practical, but it is very practical. It's both. It is woo-woo and practical. Because Agreed. if you're meditating and uh, I think I kind of forgot what you just said, but that triggered me into all of this. But having a conversation with someone else and letting them be, what were you just saying? You- yeah, like that. the fact that I may think that they're thinking something about me, which is yeah. creating my energy that they're now sensing, which is creating the truth of the false reality in my mind. It's making the illusion real for me yeah. Yeah. that now that they're behaving that way and it's confirming what I created energetically. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Like yeah, if yeah, I yeah. think, this has probably happened between us where I think that, I think that you are maybe upset with me. So I'm creating that energy and I'm being weird and standoffish. And now you're like, why are you acting like that? Yeah. And now you're confirming that, oh, so you you do have you a, are mad. Yeah, 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 yeah you yeah, do yeah, have exactly. a thing with me. And you're like, no, I, I don't. But why are you saying that I do? And then I'm like, see, see, there's a thing. Yeah. Like I'm trying to create yes. evidence for my belief. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So yeah. we are all influencing. That's why the energy tuning when you're, even if you are their superiority, inferior, or like whatever going on with interactions, I always say after the fact, when you're meditating and reflecting, number one, um, oh, you also mentioned something about this just now. Uh, when you are reflecting on areas you want to refine your for yourself, that's mm-hmm. fine. Because we all do still, we're not perfect. So we can learn all these tools and techniques and go into interactions and try our best. But we're still going to have our natural expressions, our natural ways of being. If we're already trying our best regulating, that's the best we can do. And a lot of times we just have to meditate after and think about, <laughs> okay, next Literally. time, yeah, how can we refine this? So in the meditation, you first got to just accept and let go. And then when you're thinking of the other party, you always want to try to see them at the best light too. Yeah. 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 But that can also get nuanced because (laughs) it's not about you because a lot of times when we're, you know, thinking about what just happened and we're thinking about the other person, maybe we went from being very angry to just now, okay, we're going to forgive. But then that can start to become, oh, maybe they really don't like me. And maybe like, oh, no, then I have to be extra nice next time because yeah. like, oh, no, like maybe then you're inferior again, right? Mm. Or sometimes, you know, we're bo- we're all business people. Like we're there are certain things where you just don't see eye to eye with certain people and there are people we just don't vibe with. Yes. That's just the truth, the nature of things. Yes. So it's also not about like, if you don't vibe with certain people, you're not there trying to be like, okay, how do I make it work with them? How do I, you can still recognize that we're just not on the same page. We have different goals and I can even have observations of you, but I'm going to just know that I am in my own, in my right. I am doing my best. I know what my intentions are. I'm going to move forward. And whenever I think of you, I'm wishing the best for you, but I don't need to be like extra nice in this, this Mm -hmm. reflection too. It's essentially performative and not natural. And um, I'm thinking about myself and potentially a lot of listeners of your content but it feels like we might be absorbing your content because not this is not the only reason but because we're trying to force a non-workable situation it's like how how do I make it more workable like how do I become softer how do I become sharper like how do I become more nuanced so that this conversation goes better and I think you bring up a really important point which seems so basic and obvious but you you literally just said it sometimes you just don't vibe with people Mm -hmm. and that I think I think that's really hard for us to accept, especially in a culture of self-development where we're kind of being taught that you can develop yourself to make those situations better. You can become more spiritual and loving to accept all people. And I think there's this sense that I can improve myself to be like positive in all of these interactions. But I, I haven't even gotten that good yet at being able to know fully like when something is just like yeah not same. a vibe yeah I like, I, like i i feel like it, it do, does depend um mm-hmm. i think this really speaks to 
really knowing yourself. Yes. Yeah. Because I think prior to getting to know who I was, I wouldn't really know. I remember when I went through that journey, I'm like, do I like this person? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't even know. Yeah. Even when I was That's deciding on yeah. whether or not to have a second kid, I was like, I don't actually know if it's me that doesn't want to or if it's mm. my the fact that my mom made a comment and is it that? That's what I'm resisting. Or right. So it took time to really discern who inside of me is like even making this decision yeah. or making these observations. Yeah. And so I think it's actually, for me, I think become really a lot easier to know when it's not a vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, You're really good at that. B- much better than before. I think yeah. now it's, I, 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 I do somatic coaching. So, so much of my training and my, my schooling, I guess you can say has been about energy tuning mm-hmm. to yourself first mm-hmm. and yes. recognizing immediately what is not mine. Yes. And so a lot of times because I'm so cancerian and so watery, I would enmesh where someone yes. would be upset with me and yes. I would feel viscerally their pain. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so then I would try to soothe that versus now where I can say, oh, I can see that person's pain, yeah. but I can mm-hmm. also recognize that that's, that's not mine. Exactly. And care, not carry. Yes. Exactly. Alert exactly. nonchalance. Exactly. <laughs> and so I think in, in certain situations where I'm like, yeah, it's not this person that I, I don't mesh with, I make that okay and actually a very self-loving experience where mm-hmm. I'm allowing myself to have an opinion. Yeah. Because even with kids, it's so funny how many parents don't get this yet, but they kind of force their kids to be friends with people. Mm-hmm. Or they'll be like, go hug your aunt or go hug, you know, your grandpa. And I don't do that with her. It's more about, do you want to? And, you know, when she doesn't want to play with someone and she feels bad, it's separating that. You can experience empathy mm-hmm. for this person who maybe feels left out, but you get to own that mm-hmm. you don't want to play with that person. Mm-hmm. But it goes against, I think, a lot of teachers and some parents of like, well, yeah. yeah, to not leave that person out. But yeah, right. so I think we were also mm-hmm. conditioned, especially as women, to kind of, I guess, bend our truth yeah. in order to, for the collective, make everybody else feel better. Of course. And so that's what I've been kind of unlearning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I actually think you do really know when someone's not a vibe, but maybe it's sometimes not, but yeah. I think that goes for everyone. The thing is, yeah. I do think, like for example, your daughter's case, it, it get it can get very confusing for her too, right? For sure. I I feel like the way I mean I don't even have a daughter, but like how I'm just seeing it is teaching them that it is it is all we are all one. It is we should love everyone, even if you don't vibe with someone, you just accept them for being there and if it's like a social situation if they're feeling left out you tell them to join in on this entire group but with for your own time and energy and what you want to do in your life you don't have to hang out with anyone you can be very nonchalant about it but not in a way where it's like no I don't want to hang out with you it's just like yeah I'm gonna I don't even have to talk tell you this but I'm just gonna play with this person and when I see this person I'll laugh but like it's you know it's just like balance of you literally can do whatever the hell you want, but your energy in general is just like you're not being there, like discriminating people. So yes. yeah. it's very, it's more just, I think you just teach through energy. You just teach them through balance of energy a lot of times. Yeah. yeah. And I think really, again, attuning to what your truth is. Yeah. Because even mm-hmm. with my daughter, when it comes to playing with somebody, I do ask her, like, do you actually have fun with this person? Yeah. You know, are yeah. you enjoying your time exactly. with them? Yeah. Um, or is it that you only feel bad? Right. And so helping to kind of extract mm-hmm. all yes. of those entangled emotions, because even I have to do that. You yeah. know, whether it might be um, a friendship or maybe someone I work Same. with or someone who wants to partner with me or maybe Same. even come on the podcast or something, there is my initial response is like, I don't want them to feel bad, so yes. Mm, mm. And so then I notice that, and then it's like, okay, but how do I actually feel? And the way that I can extract how I really feel is by asking myself the question, if no one got hurt, what would I want? Yeah. Because that's how I can be like, well, this is what I want. Yeah. But then I can also see where I'm worried about hurting someone's feelings, and I can see those entanglements. And so, yeah, you're right. It's very, it is nuanced. And I think it is hard to teach because... It can be confusing because so much of their messaging is about being kind. Yeah. But yes. I think being kind and people pleasing, as we talked about before we started recording, are two completely different yeah. things. Yeah. So I would love for you to maybe go into that arena because um, I think we have a lot of people pleasers um, mm-hmm. that listen in. And mm-hmm. so because I think we trick ourselves into thinking I'm a good person. Mm-hmm. I want to be nice. And so mm-hmm. I'm going to do this thing. But there is a difference. So yeah. I would love for you to explain. Yeah, I think in the end, it's just just like what you said trusting your own thoughts and emotions and intentions and sometimes you need to take moments for it to really come through Mm. and when you're clear about that 
whatever you decide and do, it's again nonchalance. It's you're not you're not doing it to hurt anyone, but the more it's just ingrained in you. For example, I'm someone where if I, I'm actually very selective about people I hang out with. And yeah, this, well, we should all be. Yeah. yeah. And, and then I talk about socializing, but I'm just like, <laughs> I think the hallmark of true confidence and socializing is this ability to not be like, okay, I'm just going to go always hang out with these people or like, I always need to be a part of something because yes. I can't just be by myself. You got to be very detached so that you can connect. So people pleasing I think when we are when we are feeling like we are when the intention is coming from fear or concern of another instead of what our true mm. intentions are that is the key yeah. I think the quote I was saying um people pleasing well, it's not my quote I actually saw it on Instagram but people pleasing is coming from fear and kindness comes from love right yes and yes Yes, kindness comes from love, but I think the best way to go by in your day to days is to just stick with what you want and just be direct about it. Mm. But not in a way where you're like superior and being like, no, I don't want to. Like needing to prove to people that no, like I'm I'm above this or like, mm. no, I don't want this to be with you. Like no matter if it's expressively or passive aggressive. And that is kind of superior, but that's masking inferior again, right? Because yes. why are you trying so hard with yeah. that? Yeah. So I think for me, I can see that I'm really good at just maintaining my time and space and doing things only I want to do. But I see a lot of people in my life where they just get tied down by people. Yeah. They're always saying yes or no, or they feel so bad doing this or that. Mm -hmm. And that is the people pleasing. And for me, I feel completely okay with it. And sometimes when I'm saying no to certain people or when I maybe don't reply, I, I still in the moment, I always choose the best appropriate way to go about it. And I think my compass on the inside is just in this moment what is going to be the most feel good for me nonchalant mm. for me but no sort of offense or defense energy on them too hmm. and right. a lot of times it's right. just stating it clearly and then moving on that's it yeah and and if I do ever get any sort of reactions from them I'll consider it but I'll consider in a way where I'm like is this something you know like should I uh, my relationship with this person do they feel a certain way like maybe next time Maybe I will go with them next week. I'll, I'll pin that mm. or something. And sometimes I do feel re reaction, but I choose to just let it go because it's also like they're on their own journey and they really do get triggered. I did what I was supposed to do. And I'm literally not holding any resentment. I'm, it's just observation. I, I see it. But okay, I move on. That's it. Mm. And if yeah. they have anything to say to me, they'll come to me. So I think the most important thing you mentioned there is owning what you want without the... Um, like judging energy or like resentment or anything it's mm -hmm. just this is just what i want yeah it's not like this is what i want or like this is what i want yeah, exactly. it's like this is what i want and i'm realizing um how rare these people are because i think i told you about one of the girls i met at the harvard summit who scared me yes yeah okay so i met this woman <laughs> um incredible woman she's a psychotherapist and she owns her own practice and um you could just tell this woman operated from her wants and needs, but not in a way that judged anyone for what they did. Mm -hmm. And she really intimidated me. Like, I don't see people behaving that way. So we had this like early morning thing and we all like rode in the bus together. She did not do that. She walked. Not because she didn't want to hang out with us. And you could tell it wasn't because she didn't want yeah, to hang out. Yeah. It was because she likes her morning walk. Yeah. She was late. I love that. She didn't walk in being like, I'm so sorry, yeah. like knocking shit over. She just walked in and was like, and I was like, Wow. Like, because my manual says you can't do that. Like, you you need to be apologetic or, like, yes. like you showing up later, you, like, deciding to act separately from the group is, like, weird and selfish. Yeah. But I could just tell it was purely, like, centered. And mm -hmm. it was clear that she wasn't really thinking of us. Not mm -hmm. in, like, a I don't, I don't care, care exactly. yeah. but in a, like, it, it was the nonchalant yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Like, I, I care about you guys yeah. and I'm here, but I'm living yeah. the way I want to live. and. I told her, remember I told yeah. you that I told her at the end of the uh, the weekend and I started weeping because I just was like, I just, I really admire you. Like I just started crying because yeah. I'm not around that energy very often yeah, yeah. where th that's really one of the only people I've seen just own her wants without doing this like inferior superior thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so yeah. rare. And the not caring thing, it's 
it's almost, I think what I sense from that was that she knows she doesn't need to care. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Which is actually more empowering for the people around her. Yeah, It exactly. is. Like, I didn't feel like a weirdness of like her yeah. not caring. It was more just like, you're right. Like, why would you care what I think about you showing up later walking? Like, it, it was just odd though. Like, I haven't seen many people yeah. behave that way. She um, is a representation <clears throat> of the age of Aquarius we're entering or we're now and we're entering. Because you know what that truly means? Uh, age of Aquarius and it's going to be, we're already in this world. Yeah, it's, the energy's here. Yeah, it's a, all about individuality so that you can connect. Detach mm-hmm. to connect. And that is, it's literally... <sighs> Things that like people in our roles are showing through our own avenues and how the world is becoming with technology because AI, VR, uh, the other R, whatever, <laughs> AR, like yeah. all of it, um, it's allowing us to become e- more and more independent in each person's own lives. Like mm-hmm. re- whether it's work, whether mm-hmm. it's your social activities, you can literally just be very independent. However, it's all balanced. So for us to be like this, the technology is also allowing us to connect more and more. So this is all in the external outer areas, but it's a reflection of what's going on on the inside. Mm-hmm. She was an example of where we can all get to, which is we no longer make choices, do things, do certain decisions where we're like in fear of concerns about others because it's connected. Even mm-hmm. though she presented a detached energy, she was actually truly connecting everyone because you connected yeah, with her. I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. she showed just through mm-hmm. her energy about, and everyone was inspired by that. And that actually allowed you guys to make a more genuine connection. So I, and I, that kind of energy is what I think we're all going into mm. because imagine, and I think this is what's happening. Um, imagine in five, 10 years where more and more people understand a lot of the things that we're talking about. Yep. People will get into a state where they're confident in themselves that they know the balance game. They know that their thoughts and emotions, we all influence each other, but we can still play. So mm. everyone hopefully will get to a place where you're always, we're all confident. We all know how to show our genuine selves. We all accept our genuine expressions, but we keep it balanced. So when we're interacting, I'm never like attaching myself to you. And there's a lot of this that can be spoken to all kinds of relationships too, right? I, I think romantic relationships, that's a huge one. Yeah. So much attachment issues, so many things. I just watched um, Ashley Madison docuseries on Netflix. Oh, oh yeah. So much I would say to that too. <laughs> but um. Yeah, I think in the future, and I think ideally, it's really this ability to detach, to connect with everyone. And she did such a great job presenting that. Mm, yeah, yeah, and I love that. Um, well, what that kind of pings within me is that by learning how to be more independent, that's how you can have healthy interdependency. Yeah, yes. exactly. Whereas right now, I think we have a lot of codependency. Mm-hmm. And that's that's all we've been mirror. That's all we know. Yeah. Um, and it seems like when you are coming from codependency, moving into independence, interdependency feels like non-love somehow. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm. oh, because love to you is like neediness and like, or being needed and being attached at the hip. But that's actually not love, that's fear. Yeah, it is. Both sides. (sighs) Because I I have some of that experience too, but I also, I've always been very independent. So for me, sometimes it's also figuring out how do I maintain my independence, but also allow relationships that come closer to me too yeah <laughs> yeah both sides yeah yeah <laughs> that's so funny that's <laughs> true <laughs> yeah because I think when someone hears to be detached to connect I think that sounds so counterintuitive yeah. but I think you have to detach and cut the cords energetically yes. from mm. the people that have kind of leached onto you or that maybe you've leached onto yes. because that's the only way you will get to know who you really are truly and so I I totally agree like there was a season in my journey where you know I'm someone that likes to verbally process things and so I would naturally just call you or call Mm -hmm. you know want to wait to talk to my therapist or talk to whoever to process things and I would kind of wait for that person to be available and so so much of my journey was let me do this on my own and Mm -hmm. so I kind of purposely wouldn't reach out to people in an effort for me to learn how will I soothe myself how can Mm -hmm. I be there for myself and so I can totally attest to that being the truth that because I know Mm -hmm. myself so deeply I am able to connect so much deeper Mm -hmm. with you because even in an ability to be honest about how I feel about a certain situation I can only do that because I took that time to know myself and I would say that that's something that I kind of consistently do Mm. I'm I really like to have alone time that's how I do decompress and that's Mm -hmm. how I kind of settle and so I think in doing that we're constantly I always call meditation a date with yourself because 
it is your opportunity to be not distracted. It's just connection time with you and you. And so, yeah, I can see that detachment is what allows yeah. connection. If you think about yeah. all the best relationships in your life or when you felt the most love, regardless of what kind of relationship it is, it's always when the other person you feel like, well, I don't know, you guys can tell me how you feel, but mm-hmm. for me, it's like the other person, I can feel that they truly love and care about me, like true emotions, but they really love, like they have their own life. Like they're not yeah. like trying to like, are you this or that? Should I do the same thing as you? Or like get always needing my opinion or always be coming on to me or trying to control me. It's more yeah. like, they, I feel the strong emotions were aligned on that and we will do things because we want to. But we have our own things going on and we're so in our own things too. I feel like that kind of love is the truest love. It's like the most exciting kind of love and you can have both liberation and true connections mm-hmm. with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always felt with you that like you loving me was like, I don't know, kind of like, Wow, you really don't have to do this, but you do anyways. You always say that, which is hilarious. I always say that. You could be anywhere else. (laughs) Because when I met Gina, she already had a four-year-old daughter. And so, you know, we're conditioned to believe, and not not that it's not true, but that your family kind of comes above all. (laughs) Yeah. Um, At least I was taught that as well. And as I'm getting older, I'm seeing that all relationships have, like, honestly, a lot of equal value and importance. And putting actually too much importance on one type of relationship mm-hmm. creates an imbalance. Mm-hmm. Yes. But um, when we were spending time together and like building our business, I felt so like, wow, like you really like me, don't you? Oh, like yeah. kind of like it didn't feel like you needed to have me in your life. You had a life. Yeah. Like yeah. you had a, a child and a husband and I also was married. So it's like, it just felt like, wow, like we're really here together because we want to. Well, it feels like a conscious decision and choice yeah right to be like engaging Mm. with each other in that way versus when I think you can feel like that that person's just coming because they felt bad or and I think obligation energy been because we have been honest about like I don't want to come to that or I don't want to go to that or (laughs) you're like I would never do that true so I think because we've also had so many honest conversations I don't I don't have any belief that you would ever fake it or lie. Right. Yeah. But I think in a lot of other friendships, I mean, a lot of our clients talk about this all the time. I think it's crazy that people go to things when they don't want to. Yeah. And I used to be one of them, but I think it's For sure. so asinine because why would you even want me to go when yeah. I clearly don't want to? But there are people that are like, come on. Yo, just I come, used to be please. like that too. <laughs> yeah. I used to be the so one funny. telling everyone to just come. Yeah. Can you just, just come? <laughs> just come on. Mm. And then you, they get, inherently would get upset if you don't. Yeah. And, I don't know. I just think that that's when you look at it from the outside, it's hilarious and crazy. But I also understand because for that person, what you're deeply desiring is connection. Mm. And so there's always this positive intent underneath these maybe crazy seeming, you know, behaviors. It's needing that connection. And so I understand. Well, the, the reason why I think it was so touching is because you can feel that she's just doing this because she wants to. Like she's not doing it because she is trying to force a certain situation for you guys or she's in fear of something. She's mm. You were touched because she didn't have to. She didn't, like, it, it was a detached wanting to do it. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, my God. This is so illuminating. And I think, you know, we've all gone on our own personal journeys to practice and embody more of that detached connection. But what would you suggest to someone who really has trouble with that? like detaching, feeling like I need them to X or maybe they are still doing some form Mm. of unconscious manipulation to get what they want. Yeah. What can they do to just feel more (sighs) nonchalance? I think they have to experiment because I think going back to what we were saying earlier about energy tuning, Mm -hmm. the other thing with that is even though I, I made a statement saying that we don't vibe with everyone and that that's completely okay the funny thing is sometimes some of our of course some of our highest tension situations are within our closest relationships too so there our close relationships are a great way to practice so for these kind of people and sometimes when we are energy tuning and we're intentional about things We just have to experiment. We have to experiment this way where we keep our intentions. We keep our highest intentions. But we, when we think of them, it's like I'm letting it go. I am not going to care so much about how they respond if they give me what I want or not. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to state exactly how I feel, what I want with them. 
maybe watch my delivery a bit and I'm going to let go. But in my meditation energy tuning time, I'm going to just see them. They can decide however they want to do, but there might be a potential that they're, it's maybe it's going to work out mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. way that I don't expect. So just kind of mm. have that base. The more you experiment with this practice, I guarantee you, you're going to come into small miracles all the time. Yes. Because that is what I did. I started to let go, but be very intentional. Yeah. And I literally don't know exactly if this person will come back or do a certain mm -hmm. thing. And I, I let go. But I, whenever I do think of them, I'm not holding grudges. But I'm also like, you know, maybe we don't vibe and it's fine. And sometimes in a short time, but sometimes in a longer time, they just naturally change. They just yeah. like, and maybe it's small things, but I always get what I want in the end. And it's these small moments are literally always moments where I'm just like, yo, this really is all connected. Like yes. something's going on here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's the universe seeing you. Yeah. Right. Because it's so funny because you say, I always get what I want, but it's because you're already emanating at the frequency of what you mm -hmm. want. Having what you want. Yeah. Because what you want, the energy of that is like, I'm all good. Mm -hmm. Like it's good. Yeah, like I don't exactly. I don't need anything. I have what I want. And so then it's almost like it has the universe has no choice but to respond. Mm -hmm. Which I just find fascinating because you obviously know about the observer effect, right? How, you know, looking at the particles or yeah, expecting yeah, yeah. them to move in a certain way impacts yeah. them. And I think about this so much in my relationships like like if I assume you're going to react a certain way, like how much is my like observing and creating that energy within me making me yeah. see that yeah. you know and so you said something earlier which i thought was so beautiful you we need to see everyone in the highest light yeah when we converse and i read a lot of relationship books <laughs> currently reading fight right brilliant by the gottmans but something that any relationship therapist will tell you is that each partner over time due to small resentments building up builds what they call a negative core image Yes. And this yeah. negative core image is who they're responding to in a moment of stress. Mm. So let's say you and I have been fighting a lot for years and then you get stressed and I'm stressed. Now when I'm talking to you, you don't see me as me the way I am now. Yeah. You see the negative core exactly. image. Yeah. yeah. And I have been like playing around with that a lot in my yes. life because it's so natural. Yeah. And it's almost like you need the negative core image because maybe you have an agenda. Yeah. Um, maybe you want to prove yourself correctly, yeah. which is obviously coming from the superiority. Yeah. But if I enter every conversation and assume yes. the highest and best, yes. I'm not going to be as combative. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I know it's really hard for people that are like, this is impossible. My relationships are so bad and this person, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I get it. So the other thing I wrote in the guide too, I'm like, if the energy is too intense to tune at this time, then you got to just diffuse and go away. Like, yes. you let go. But I didn't write the uh, latter part of that. Because honestly, Andy, it is you. It's not them. It's you. It's you, you diffusing your own energy. Yes. So when I say when the energy is too intense to tune, honestly, if I'm being more frank, it's it's too intense for you right now. Yes. Because it's mm -hmm. not them. It's not their fault. It's not your fault. But it is maybe the reality of things. You can't see them in a certain way. And that's fine. Because you also don't want to try so hard that you start to put yourself inferior. So maybe exactly. you need some time. Uh, yeah. But that part. when you do have the ability to tune from this balanced state and you experiment and it's it's just like being intentional but then having nonchalant responses and it's sometimes it is easier to leave from an intense group of people and practice on newer people first like smaller situations mm -hmm. but it does work like for example I mentioned her already but my mother like my relationship with my mother has evolved and shifted so much and she was my experiment like I she, she used to was yeah too. yeah I used to get into it with her and it's it was always so confusing because we also have such deep love and I know like I know. it's just so entangled and confusing but she would always just be like triggering me and I would just always be like this and then in the beginning when I was first going through my journey and I would try to just be again when I started to really play with social dynamics emotional expressions in the beginning, I knew that, okay, I'm supposed to like, be calm, be calm. But then on the inside, I would still be like, bitch. Harry's <laughs> moon, yeah. Harry's moon, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so then I would like, she would be saying certain things. I'll be like, okay, 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 mm. okay. Yeah. I would try to, you know, make my sh uh, tone very light, but inside I'm still yeah. strained. There's and not then, congruency. Yes. And then so she would still come at me and I'd be like, not working and then uh. that that actually might be one of the reasons why it like really got me to break through because i realized no it's inside out 
You yes. literally have to feel. And I think I think this is the biggest thing. So much of my content, like people try it and see wins, but then they still come back. They're like, it's not working. I'm like, you got to be very honest with yourself. Exactly. You got to be in that moment. <laughs> And it's hard, I know, because it's not about just being like, oh, no, she's right now. No, she's right. No, it's about I have my rights. I know what's up. But whatever she's saying right now, is there can I just get curious? Like, is there something there? And even if there is something there, how do I approach it so that I'm still holding myself high and I can be like, you know what? I I see your point. I see my point. I see your point, too. And it, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll process it or Maybe we can talk or not talk, but it's yeah. this balance of like this and you, me and you at the same time. So, but then that is the way. So the answer to your question is they have to experiment. They have to know that's coming from the inside mm-hmm. out. And a huge part of it that's actually very easy and we always overlook is just regulation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Breathing, dude, breathing in live moments. We did the three breaths before we started. We did. Like, yeah. We tuned in. Yeah. I mean, this is fascinating because it happens with so many of our clients and you've had a direct experience with your mom. And one of the things that we teach is you can change your relationships without changing the other person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just just you deciding to act energetically differently will impact their energy yeah. because so much of your work is yeah. we are reflections and mirrors yes. of each other. And yes. so, yeah, I mean, your relationship with your mom, changed. that was your experiment too. That was so interesting. Yeah, it's interesting because with my mom, like we're not close, I would say, but I think she started to share and express certain things that she never would have said before. And it's so obvious to me now because obviously when I would come over before, I'd be like, hey – yeah. arms crossed I don't know yeah. like whatever mom like yeah. it'd be like that right and I'm acting like a 12 year old yeah. and so then of yeah. course she's, she's responding. gonna respond yeah. to the 12 year old because yeah. my mom will constantly treat me like I'm the dumbest person on earth like she'll be like wash your hands with soap and like make Did sure you eat- make sure you feed your daughter and I'm like I know that yeah. like she's nine like I fed her many meals and yeah. so I would react to that of, oh, she thinks I'm stupid. So a lot of assumptions are being made. I have the negative core image of my mom having a negative core image of me. And so I keep responding to that. It's a loop. It's such a loop. And so once I started just kind of laughing off, like, yes, no, mom, I don't wash my hands. Or like, no, mom, I don't feed my daughter. Like, once I started being more playful, it opened up a totally different portal for conversing with her because then she would laugh and kind of be like, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I just get like that because I just worry about you. Where we would never get to that point because I'd put up a wall like, oh, you're so annoying. And then she would feel hurt and then the loop continues. And so I would say that it opened up a lot more conversations of her maybe taking some level of ownership of how the way that she raised me. So it's not like we talk every day and we're like close in that way, but I do feel like it has opened up a totally different energetic vibration of our energy when we're together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, same. And it's always a work in progress, but you do see the shifts. And in those moments, you realize that we really are mirrors. Like it's such a direct, oh, holy shit, it is that. And it's within my own life, whenever I have these moments, the more I do it, the more I'm like this, we are all interconnected, of course. It's like one consciousness and we're just in all of our own different perspectives. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's hard to notice that for sure in the moment. Of course. Because when you're having oh, interaction yeah. with somebody, you're like, oh, that person just pissed me off and I yeah. can't believe they said that. And yeah. it does take time of to course. realize. And Wait. I still go through it all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just yeah. like thinking negative, negative. Or like it's more, I think for me, the... It's I still have this tendency to need to control certain things or I know my way and if this person does not match it and especially if we're in a working relationship or some sort of relationship where it impacts me, I will just like think they're beneath me. I would just think like <laughs> this bitch can't do it. <laughs> but, but then like so and funny. I still need to work through that because I, you know, for example, this specific example, it's not that – I'm better, but I do have my valid reasons for a certain way that I do things. Mm -hmm. And then if I make an observation of someone else, there's some truth in that. But I think what I've been practicing more is seeing that they have their whole own universe of why they are doing it their own way, why they are reacting to me their own way. And the thing is, the truth is, there's whatever their level is at is not matching mine. But it's not like I'm better, but it's more so maybe Mm -hmm. I am at a certain high level here, but their high level may be somewhere here, but they just don't want, like, it's just not aligned. We're just not aligned. So, 
And, you know, I, I get very detailed because this is my line of work, but I think, like, this is where moments where we have attitude or certain emotions and it's okay. And it's just about watching it not get to a point where it's starting to sabotage ourselves. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, it's knowing, yeah. I think, the boundaries within the playground, yeah. right? It's, and yeah. it's kind of knowing what that edge is. Mm -hmm. And again, you have to know yourself deeply enough to know that. Mm -hmm. And your edge is going to be different than mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I love what you said. It's not about one being better than the other. Because, I mean, I think we both, any entrepreneur has felt that when they're working with someone and you're like, how do you not understand like what I'm telling you to yeah. do? But again, that doesn't mean my way is better. That just means you work differently yeah. than I do, right? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think like part of my acceptance journey has been realizing that actually if I was that exact person with those exact life experiences and beliefs and feelings I'm like I would act like that because right. oftentimes what we say is like but I would never do that but it's like but yeah. that's because you're not yeah, you're of not course them. you in yeah. your reality would not do that of course yeah, you that's you're a great way to put it but it's like but me in their reality, yeah. I have to accept that I would do that. And that's so hard because I'm not saying me now would do that. I'm saying me, them, yeah, exactly, as them exactly. would do that. Yeah. And I think that's how I get to places where I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Acceptance is eventually me getting to the place where I don't expend any energy believing that it could be different. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not different. Yeah. It is like this. Yeah. You did say it like that or you yeah. do think like that. And I think yeah. like this, I can't spend any more energy thinking, wow, they should really think differently about this or respond differently. It's like it, they right. didn't. And that's that's a journey. Yeah. Right? I think most all of our suffering is thinking that it should be different. Yeah. Yes. And so I'm trying to get faster and faster at this is how yeah. it is right yeah. now. And it could not be different. Yeah. Even if that really grates against me. But um yeah, I always go there first. Okay. As the Aries moon. <laughs> I like that. I like that approach where it's like you just accept it for what it is. But when you're able to do that, I actually think then in the moment you can present some attitude or your genuine thoughts, even if you're like, are you kind of stupid? <laughs> but that's fine because that's the limit because mm -hmm. then you stop there. You see how they respond and then you can work with that. And if you allow yourself to start to think that, wait, no, like, are you actually stupid? Why are you not doing <laughs> this way? Then you're getting into a yeah. place where you should it's you're digging yourself in a hole exactly mm -hmm. yeah that usually is where i stop like usually mm -hmm. that will elicit the kind of response i want anyways yeah. like yeah. i'm trying to get energy back yeah, right exactly, exactly. um so i don't usually go further than that yeah. but yeah it is interesting like i know that that's my cue yeah. i'm like okay i'm starting to get like a little bit heated yeah 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 but i think these are the small moments where this is where we start to play and this is where the superior and uh, well superior and inferior are always how i see things as imbalanced but this is where we start to really push the edges of sharp soft and playful yeah. i think the big one huge thing i actually encourage people to be sharper softer and more playful because most of the people that come to me they're so especially if they're already digesting my content they're very aware mm -hmm. and the way that they present themselves a lot of times when i have clients or when i do my workshops they're just so like me when i was my stoic face yeah they're no just energy like, yeah no expressions and like uh, kind of people pleasing but also watching themselves so it's just like emotionless yeah so i'm just like dude like you can be playful i one thing um i see a lot in my workshops because i host small group workshops and i i uh i gauge how people are socializing i give them feedback but we talk about socializing in the mm. conversations mm -hmm. i always one feedback i always tell people is hey look i want you guys to let your intrusive thoughts come through I see some of you were talking and I see yeah. you guys, you know, think certain things and you're, you're just like, oh, I'm not going to say it. Or like you start to say it in a very like, oh, this, mm -hmm. this, this. I'm like, just say it. Just say yeah. it. You can go for it. It's fine. Like, yeah, I want people to show their it's OK to be expressional. It's OK to be sharp. It's OK to be soft. It's OK to be playful. It is really only when you are starting to do it because you're scared or you're trying to force things. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think when you were, if I were to answer your initial thought about your sharpness, mm -hmm. your sharpness is so amazing. Like, I think when I, I told you when I saw your TikTok, <laughs> seriously, yeah. It's like what got people to follow you. Mm -hmm. You're very direct and mm -hmm. this is how it is. But in a way where it's, of course, like you're just speaking truth. Yes. I think mm -hmm. it's only when... And I feel it too. This is exactly my experience. When I start to become forceful, <laughs> like when I'm yeah. just like, <laughs> See it, it is my like way. this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's so funny because with my content, I don't know who's going to digest it and who's going to agree with it. So I, yeah. I really am coming across with the nonchalance. It's kind of mm -hmm. like you engage or don't, take it or leave yeah. it. Yeah. I kind of have that energy 
already. Yeah. And so maybe that's uh, maybe that's what people are sensing, that that's yeah. just a natural sharpness, yeah. not like a trying to get me to change yeah. sharpness, because that's yeah. the kind that I guess people would reject. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. for me, I'm the same. And in my journey, I have accepted my sharpness, but I also I also am soft, so I play with all of them. But now what I do is I accept it fully, but I have been making a lot of small refinements throughout the years. Mm-hmm. And it's conscious, but how I go about it so I don't feel bad and I can change and I can love myself is that like in the moment, I'm always like, and I still have to constantly remind myself, but every single moment where I'm reflecting on my content, I'm just like, Okay, I noticed this, this, this. However, I I'm great. Like it's it's good. Yes, like, yes, I'm okay, same. but then I can still see things. And you know, sharpness. It's it's just when I watch my videos back, I'm just like, okay, this part. I can. It's more so my feelings. I can feel that I'm starting to get worked up, and I'm doing a lot of. And I can see that my energy is just. I'm forcing it. Then I'm just like, okay, in the future, I'm just gonna practice more of this. And I actually work a lot with my um, tonalities and my pace Mm -hmm. I literally treat myself as a science experiment so I when I even when I'm recording my YouTubes or lives I test talking without a mic talking with hearing myself and Mm. I work on my tones and I listen to myself back and I make little refinements so I still do shift a lot of things but I don't discount how I naturally express myself I just find all the tools and ways where I can make my natural expressions even more at ease for me and yeah. appeasing for others too. It's a balance again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, this really feels like what I think the heart of the self development journey is. It's like love yourself yeah. and then and then choose areas where you want to refine out of love. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, okay, like I love myself, but like what would it be like if I played with my tone? Yeah, or exactly. what would it be like if I, you know, played around with my wardrobe? Mm-hmm. You know, these are not things that are going to completely inflate your sense of self because mm-hmm. you already ha- are secure yeah. um, mm-hmm. or change yourself. Yeah. It's just... It's just the way you play. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, this has been, like, just – we could go forever. I know. I know. We're yeah, just, like, a little ping-pong this? match, honestly. I know, and I know you have to go soon, oh, so. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It went by so fast. I know. So fast. I know. We have so much to talk about. I knew it was going to happen like this. I knew I'm it. happy that we were able to go to so many topics, too. There's so much here. There's so much. I know. We could always yeah. go deeper next time. Yeah, next time um, when you're back. Yeah. Absolutely. But – and I have a suspicion I might know your answer, but, of course, we're the Spiraling Higher podcast, so we talk about – themes where we are constantly spiraling through at different levels of consciousness. I'm sure there are many things that you've noticed different things about as you've grown, but what has been the most sticky theme for you on your spiritual journey that you continue to bring awareness to over and over again? Honestly, the first thought that came into my mind is when I found out that your podcast is called Spiraling Higher, I was like, oh my gosh, I love it because the spiral has been a huge download like I literally got visions of it in my meditation and psychedelic experiences where it showed me that this is how we grow. Yes, it like is. It's, it's an it's, upward spiral. Yes, it's an upward spiral. And that I always keep that in mind because that reminds me that what and so my answer is my entire way of growing. It's always coming back to things. But then this time I'm leveling up, coming mm-hmm. back again, this time I'm leveling up. And I need to know that because sometimes, you know, you come into a situation and you almost feel like, wait, I've done this before. Why is it still hard this time? But then when you take yourself higher, you're like, wait a minute, this time I'm doing it is like way more intense than last time. But I'm doing it with more ease. I'm able to take more on. So it's really is a spiral. It's it really nothing. Is. It's not like this. And it's it's going up but it's always going up and even if you have like little ups and downs it's that's still up yeah it's still up so it's it's also such an ecstatic way of viewing life too the more you accept that Mm. I think you made a comment earlier about how things are becoming just more play if you I I do think everyone you need to commit to yourself you need to love yourself you need to heal yourself at least for me I went through a number of years where it was very emotional where it was very tolling I was like is there a light at the end of the tunnel (laughs) but now it's like yeah there's still things but I'm just playing mostly and life really is becoming better and better and how you imagine life can be when you were a kid is possible but you are the maker of it so I love the spiral. I love that how you guys branded that. And yeah, that's the way that I see growth too. Wow. Fabulous answer. So in alignment with our mission. Yeah. And I think a lot of our listeners are going to resonate with it because I think the hardest thing is feeling like you've gone backwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, oh my God, this again. But it's it's not this again. Mm-hmm. It's it's this 
again, yeah. like with a new awareness. Yeah. And so it's actually like that moment for the first time. Mm. Right. So I, I, I just think this notion of going backwards, like you, you actually cannot go backwards. And so, True. yeah, it's kind of like being in an elevator and you're seeing the same view, but you're higher. Yeah. Up, mm. right? so, I love that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, thank you so much for sharing your, your energy and your wisdom with us. And mm. by the way, anyone who's listening, we talked about Ariel's guide a lot. That's available for purchase. So can yeah. you tell us about where we can like buy things, work with you, yeah. view you? Um yeah, because I'm sure people are going to want to know more. Yeah, thank you. And thank you guys so much. That was an incredible conversation. I felt my vibration just being so high the whole time. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I loved it. Thank you, guys. Um, so my social dynamics guide right now is currently only available for my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients and if you participate in my monthly workshops. So if you want to get the guide, uh, come do coaching with me or join my workshops. I am using that guide. It's really a source for me right now. It's a really short guide to build kind of this masterclass program I am uh, sprinkling out throughout the summer so there's going to be a lot more uh, I'm using this as a source so stay tuned but right now I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching you guys can book it with me I do monthly workshops um, I also do a lot of live streams on YouTube TikTok and Instagram I also have a workplace boundary script so if you're mm. someone that has issues with uh, um, communicating boundaries in the workplace you can get that from my website as well and I'm on most major social channels so you'll find all the links yes. yes. for you guys yeah in the show that. notes yeah. yeah yeah and thank you guys so much again that was an incredible thank conversation you. yeah this was such a vibe thank you so much for being here mm -hmm. and um, we can't wait to see more content from you thank yes. you guys amazing okay thank you thank bye you. bye Thank you so much for listening to this honest conversation. We hope it brought you peace, clarity, and a little bit further along your spiritual journey. If you loved this episode, it would mean the world to us if you left us a five-star rating and a review so we can bring you more conscious conversations, spiritual topics, and guests. And we lovingly invite you to join our free Spiraling Higher community by clicking the link in the show notes to continue this healing dialogue and share with us how this episode impacted you. Come on in, introduce yourself, and meet your conscious besties in a safe space for healing conversations between us and other like-minded people on their healing journey. Here's to spiraling higher.